Technically, this keyboard has existed for a great long while. Around three years ago, it made its rounds with Western media, and they've all found the same thing. The Mountain Everest Max modular mechanical keyboard is pretty great, but it's got some shortcomings, especially with its software. Now in 2024, with a new finish and color option and updates to its Basecamp software, does it retain its status as a solid dual keyboard or has it lost its footing over the years? I'm Kevin Evangelista, welcome to my channel, and this is my review of the Mountain Everest Max keyboard. But before we continue with the video, let's keep the lights on here in the studio. This video is brought to you by Sneak Attack Design Lab. They're a clothing company that specializes in technical fashion, more commonly known as techwear, and you can see me in their clothes in most of my videos. I've been supporting their brand ever since I met them back in 2019, and now they're returning the favor. Head on over to this link, you can find it in the description as well, to get 10% off your order from their site. Check their clothes out, you're bound to see something badass over there that'll look great on you. Thank you very much to Sneak Attack for this exclusive promo for my viewers. Now, back to the video. As with all my reviews, we start at the outside. In stark contrast to my numerous budget keyboard reviews that feature all plastic housings, straightforward simple designs, and non-cherry switches, the Mountain Everest Max goes all out on its design and features. It's got an aluminum top housing, plate-mounted cherry red switches, an intricately detailed and extra-functional bottom plate, removable cables, additional ports for its modular accessories, and even a light bar around the entire body. The only angle that this keyboard looks simple is when you view it from the top. One look at the side, any side for that matter, you will immediately see that it begs to be customized and expanded with its modules. The build is pretty amazing for the price. It looks and feels premium, and I'm pretty sure that it can run with the best of the best out there. And I have to say, I'm a fan of this heavy brushed aluminum with apparent machining marks. It ruggedizes the entire look of the keyboard without making it look obnoxious. It actually reminds me of the acronym ROG RMT02 laptop. The Everest Max can be used in many modes. 10 keyless, TKL with display dial extension, a full size with standard and obverse numpad positions, and finally a full setup with a second expansion module, either the display pad or the macro pad. Unfortunately, you can't have all four connected all at the same time. There's just not enough space, but we'll get to the accessories later. The wrist rest is built well like the rest of the keyboard, but it sticks out like a sore thumb as the most poorly designed out of all the parts. All because of this lip around the edge. It tends to give way to the weight of your hand and even levers the keyboard up during typing. I opted to skip out entirely using the wrist rest in my review process and you should probably do the same if you've got large, heavy hands like mine. Moving on to what I think is a well-designed part of the keyboard are the feet, or the magnetic feet in this instance. Instead of having the standard flip-up or staggered flip-up feet, the Everest Max features a stack of magnetic pucks that connect to the underside of the keyboard to act as risers. There are 12 in total included with the Everest Max, meaning you can attach three pucks per top corner of both the keyboard and the numpad. It works really well and allows finer control of the height over the binary options that you have with flip-up feet. It is a bit awkward to install, yes, but I still consider this a win in my box. Great job, Mountain. While the build is overall pretty good, we have to talk about this keyboard's considerations for connecting its modules, an area where it fares a little worse. A lot of magnetic connections are used to dock and undock the modules, along with their respective USB-C ports, and they leave a lot to be desired. You can see this most apparent in the numpad connection, it just doesn't have that strong, secure connection that inspires confidence. Be very careful when picking up the Everest Max with the numpad attached, because it's not very strong, it's going to give way, and when it does, you're going to drop both things at the same time and you may end up damaging your expensive keyboard. This also risks damage to both the USB-C port and the USB-C connector of the numpad, so do this multiple times and you're going to end up with a non-functioning numpad and numpad port. Yeah, you're going to have to find a better solution for this in your next keyboard's mountain because this does not work for me. 
It's not very apparent in product photos, but the Mountain Everest Max has a strong two-toned look to it because of the stock black keycaps. Unfortunately, they're also a letdown for me. They're just regular ABS keycaps, and they're not even double shot, just printed over. So that means the prints will degrade and wear off over time. There is an option to purchase the board from Mountain with pre-installed PBT keycaps, but those cost extra. You would think that a keyboard at this price would already come with PBT keycaps as stock, but that's not the case. Plus, the fonts look very, very weirdly pedestrian. What is this? Aerial rounded empty? What? On its stock 10 keyless form, the Mountain Everest Max measures at 15.5 cm deep, 36.5 cm wide, and 4.3 cm high, including the keycaps. Attaching the numpad expands the width to 46 cm, and attaching the display dial module expands the depth to 17.3 cm. These are also the weights of these, like, modes of the keyboard. It's a heavy boy. The Mountain Everest Max can be customized with a total of four modules, with both the display dial and numpad with display keys coming stock in the box, and the macro pad and display pad can be purchased a la carte. First, we have the display dial, which is alright, I guess? It's a customizable little screen that can be a menu of sorts and can display different data. It's not terribly useful, apart from making the keyboard look cool and unique. And it has media control buttons too, which aren't that much special. Next is the numpad with display keys, which is arguably much more useful. It has a bog-standard numpad cluster and four display keys at the top that can be customized to any function the user likes. And, like I mentioned before, it can connect to either the right side or the left side of the keyboard. The macro pad is a great accessory, and is actually my most used module out of the four. It may largely be because I am used to using macro clusters for use in editing videos, but I also have to point out that not only does the macro pad have enough buttons on its 6x2 array, it's also angled and positioned in a way that is conducive to actual macro use. There's just a lot of times when macro buttons are given no differentiating factor like shape or positioning to normal keys that they end up being very confusing tactile-wise, or a hassle to accidentally press. With the way the ergonomics are considered on the macro pad, it solves both those problems, and I'm very happy with that. The display pad is just the same as the macro pad, albeit given a much more baller tick. It swaps out the hot swappable mountain blue switches with display keys similar to the ones on the Everest Max's numpad, and in its stock form, looks like a small Elgato Stream Deck. The same considerations made with the macro pad when it comes to ergonomics are also made for the display pad, which makes it a treat to use. I'll probably end up buying one of these for myself. My main gripe about these two modules are why didn't Mountain use the same kind of USB-C mounting mechanism used on the display dial? Why do these modules have to be powered by their own USB-C connection when there is clearly enough USB-C ports on the Everest Max to power them? It feels like a huge letdown to have another set of cables running from your keyboard to your PC just to use these two. I don't see it being a bandwidth nor a power problem, as USB-C can easily accommodate the additional data stream from these accessories, and you can even use the built-in pass-through to power them. It is actually nice that you can just buy these modules a la carte. They don't actually need the Mountain Everest Max to work. It's just weird that they're on their own little stands here and not connected to this overbuilt keyboard. I mean, I would assume that's the entire point of the Everest Max, that it is overbuilt. It looks like the Basecamp software has improved over the years since its first Kickstarter and public release. Complaints from early reviewers have stated that the software was slow to react, had a lot of bugs that necessitated a restart, and lacked some customization features. And with my run of the Mountain Everest Max, I'm happy to report that most of those aren't the case anymore. Basecamp is now super responsive, features great customization options for the Everest Max, and even its display dial, macro pad, and display pad modules. It's also pretty stable too. I didn't experience any bugs that necessitated a system restart, only minor software restarts. It would be a great customization suite, but it's got two major problems. One, it's only Windows compatible. 
So if you're running a Linux or Mac machine, you're only going to experience the basic functionality of the Everest Max. No customization whatsoever. Second, and this is kind of half funny and half frustrating, Mountain. Why is Basecamp not a searchable nor even a visible app on Windows 11? It doesn't show up on the start menu, the all apps section, nor the app drawer. I literally have to navigate to the installation folder of Basecamp just to launch it. In fact, after doing this a few times, I just pinned Basecamp to my taskbar just so I can access it easier. Sounds like a minor problem, but once encountered, it gets really frustrating really fast. Now that I've run you through all of the details and features of the Mountain Everest Max, there's only one last thing to talk about. The actual typing experience. And I'm glad to report that, like a certain television character, it's all good, man. The whole thing feels stable and robust to type on. And maybe it's just me getting used to typing on smaller, lighter, and slightly hollow plastic keyboards. But the typing experience on the Mountain Everest Max feels rock solid. There's only a little bit of resonance in the body, and the overall sound signature of typing is a comfortable low-pitched talk. Here's how it sounds against my modded RK61 and Keymove K68. Sounds lovely, doesn't it? Like I mentioned in my unboxing video, this feels entirely different from my usual Mac keyboard reviews. And rightly so. Most of the keyboards I've covered before, the entries from Keymove, the RK61, the Womir K66, hell, even the ROG Azoth, those are keyboards that all look inwards. They lend themselves a lot to user customization and modification. A big part of the enjoyment with those keyboards is taking them apart and making your modifications to them to suit your purpose. Whereas the Mountain Everest Max is the polar opposite. It's a keyboard that looks outwards. It's not meant to be taken apart and messed with on the inside unless you're a full electronics expert. It's meant to be customized through its modules. Want the full keyboard slash stream control slash editing surface? You got it. Want a tiny 10 keyless for sweaty CS2 sessions? That's less than 30 seconds of taking things apart and putting them away. All modules of the Mountain Everest Max are only a few modules away once you set up the software. And I can appreciate that. And so should you. Don't buy the Mountain Everest Max set expecting to build your next talk machine. Get it because first, you have the money to get it. It is kind of cheaper than like a full custom. And second, it'll allow you to play the way you want to play, work the way you want to work, and any of the combinations in between. I'm Kevin Evangelista. Thank you for watching my review of the Mountain Everest Max Gaming Keyboard. If you have any questions about this, please leave them down in the comments down below. And while you're there, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.